and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour. I'm a member of the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, one of the civic partners for this show. Today we have Lynn Fox, the chair of the AAUW Student Leadership Conference in the studio. Lynn, welcome to North Country Matters. It's I'm wonderful to have you here. So glad to be here. Lynn is uh, the wife of St. Lawrence University President Bill Fox and someone who is deeply steeped in education and in leadership. Lynn is also a member of the St. Lawrence County branch of IAUW, and she's been leading an effort to create a Young Women's Leadership Institute. Leadership is on a lot of people's minds these days, Lynn, particularly in these run-up to the uh, midterm elections. Senator Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts summed up why we need more women in political leadership this way. If you don't have a seat at the table, you're probably on the menu. So, of course, we know that leadership takes many forms and is needed in all walks of life. Lily um, Eskin, Eskelin Garcia, who's the president of the National uh, Education Association, that recently said that leadership isn't a class that you take, it's how you live and breathe. And girls' leadership in the classroom must be a natural. The NAA has been doing a lot of work on this lately. So, tell us about the Young Women's Leadership Project. How did it come about? Well, um, I'll gladly tell you about it because it's actually one of the most fun things I've done in a long time. Um, and it's all about AAUW. Um, last year, um, we had a group of uh, members and potential members of the association um, to um, the president's house at St. Lawrence and had fantastic conversations about um, all the great work that AAUW does in the community. And when we, if we have time, I, I want you to list them because they just go on and on. And it's, yes, it's not, just and young, on. <laughs> not just young women. Um, and there was a little sidebar discussion about, well, we need to um, recruit more college students. And one thing that's wonderful about the association is that they allow college students to join for free and have access to uh, m much of the great work that goes on. And um, I think I said, someone said, well, you need to have something to attract them. You need to give something to them specially. What are you doing especially for college women? And that led to this wonderfully fascinating conversation about what AAUW does at a distance and what could be done here. And a group of us said, we really would enjoy thinking about how to improve, add to, um, provide ancillary education around leadership for college women um, that's outside of the classroom and outside of some of their extracurricular activities. And so a group was formed and we brainstormed. And you know, the, there are a couple questions always uh, from the outset and uh, one is what is leadership and can you teach leadership? Um, I like what Nan Cohen has said about what leadership is. She's a former president of Duke University and she says leadership has to do with mobilizing the energies of others. And the thing that I like about that definition is that it doesn't mean that it's always the boss who's the leader. It can be leadership from somewhere in the midst of an organization or in the lower ranks or at the margins. It can be leadership by someone someone who's very shy and may have a compelling story to tell in writing or in, in some other form. Um, so the answer to what is leadership is mobilizing the energies of others. And the answer to can you teach it, we decided, was that, well, you can learn it. And you can learn it a lot through practice, so we want to give people practice. Um, but there are skills that will help you be an effective leader that we can teach. Um, and so we continued to brainstorm and we decided that we would uh, ask the students themselves if there were skills that they thought we might be able to teach them. Um, or that they were looking for. Or that they were looking for right. in particular. Right. So that began um, what has been, really I'm so shocked to say, it's been about a year of t thinking and talking and planning and doing a little research. It has been um, a long process, but one of the things that we know is that the more time you put in at the front end, the better the result is going to be we at, the, hope that's um, true. Absolutely at the other right. end. Um, one of the things that a project always takes like this, particularly when you're talking about bringing together um, a group of people from diverse backgrounds and from f the four different colleges, which is what this project is looking at right now, is the funding stream. So tell us a little bit about where um, some of that money is coming from and how that's been developed. Okay, and, and I'll do that. And I also want to tell you a little bit about um, the different pieces of this puzzle that right. we're creating. Um, 
uh, of course, the American Association of University Women has been generous, and the local chapter has provided um, a bit of funding. Um, and uh, we spoke to um, AAUW National and learned a lot about their leadership efforts, and we will get a lot of free resources from them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we talked about the need to, to learn more about what a college women's leadership program looks like. And uh, so we did research and found um, that Rutgers University has a quite a substantial organization called, called the Institute for Women's Leadership. And the research director and program director there uh, is a woman that we initially thought of just inviting to speak and then realized that we could learn a lot from her. So we um, decided to invite her to come and consult with us. And at that point, we went to um, a group that some people know about and some don't. It's called the Associated Colleges of the St. Lawrence Valley. And it's essentially the four local uni uni institutions, um, SUNY Canton, SUNY Potsdam, Clarkson, and St. Lawrence, have um, an organization that attempts to do anything that's together that can be done together, whether it's sharing services or working with faculty or students. Or supporting ideas like this that Or supporting everybody. ideas like this that support. And they, mm -hmm. I think they probably don't do a lot of work for students um, traditionally, I mean directly for students, but this seemed to be a natural. So uh, we applied for money to support both the consulting we, we asked for from Mary Trigg and to support one element of our program, which is a pilot conference that we are hosting actually in November um, and they were quite happy to do it um, and uh, so we we've gotten our feet off the ground um, on the funding issue I think it's something we'll have to talk about more um, we learned for example from the Institute for Women's Leadership that they uh, do a lot of fundraising mm -hmm. um, they get some money from Rutgers but they do a lot of fundraising so uh, we don't know how much that the program will grow it's another point I should make we decided from the outset um, that this program is going to live or die on its own. It's going to grow organically. It's going to be received well and grow, and people will want to be part of it, or it won't be needed, and we'll know that. Right, 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 right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a little bit about who the tar target audience is, particularly for this first conference, sure. but in the event that that organic uh, growth happens that we certainly are looking for and hoping for, where will it go down the road? Um, I think it will go. I think I yes, do there's too, been a lot. I'm I mean, I, sure I know, it will. but I like it. You know, you have to just be careful about these things. You can't ever promise, right? Um, so our target audience to start are uh, college women um, in the St. Lawrence Valley, in our, among our four colleges. Um, more specifically, for this the the pilot conference, um, we are targeting what we call we're calling emerging leaders, and these are younger women or women who are just stepping into roles on their campuses, or women who may even feel that they're not a leader type, but they want to find out more about it. Um, and uh, our audience will grow from there. After we've done the pilot and we realized, found out, learned a lot about how we present information and how they want to have the information presented, um, we expect to offer it more broadly <coughs> on the four campuses. And um, we hope, and actually think that the students on the campuses will want to become mentor leaders mm -hmm. for high school students in the area and perhaps even middle school students um, because we've already had young women volunteer to do that. Yeah, And that's, that's really exciting and I think mm -hmm. one of the important <coughs> points to make is that the feedback we get from this first conference and the people who uh, participate in it is going to be really critical to fine-tuning this process and making sure that we are on the right track. Exactly right, so. exactly right. I, I, I want to mention um, another part of our puzzle that's not really about an audience except that it is. Um, we decided from the beginning that we wanted to um, involve women leaders from the community. And um, for this, again, this is a pilot and we're going to expand, but we thought this first go around um, we would look for women who uh, are in the community and work outside of the four colleges, for mm -hmm. the universities, because young women have great mentors inside these walls. I mean, right. uh, incredible women who do, who do uh, uh, lots of jobs at every level, but we wanted to involve community folks. So we've invited um, women leaders from the community, and we hope that they will become an audience of sorts. That's we, right. Yeah. That's right. And one of the important uh, points I think that we need to talk about in the development of this process is that we've been very careful not to have it be top down, but we've actually involved 
focus right. groups of students right. on the four campuses to give us their um, feedback and their suggestions. So this is very much going to be a student-driven process. It is, and that was really fun, as you can imagine. Yes, so well, actually, I went to a couple of them, and it yes, was yes. fun, right. Lots of right. fun about what we learned. <laughs> so what leadership skills are going to be the focus um, that you're really going to be targeting in this first pilot conference? Well, um, in this conference, we're actually going to spend time um, have role models, having role models, and then discussion time uh, with the community mentors, mentors and the students about what do they perceive to be um, their needs and how could they, how might they be delivered. Um, and it's a, in some sense an extension of the focus group research, uh, but it's in a different setting and a different mm -hmm. kind of format and uh, people um, will hear from great speakers and um, speak to uh, women leaders um, and, and contribute their own ideas and then hopefully look for some mentors in, the, in that group, among that group, people mm -hmm. that could help them with their projects. And um, I think the feedback is likely to be similar to what we've learned so far. Um, young women have some needs um, about uh, leadership skill building that are different than young men. And those are evident when you have conversations with them. They, um, want, they often, often want to know, uh, to learn more about negotiation and conflict resolution. I think young women, all of us, perceive mm -hmm. sometimes that men get trained in ways that we somehow miss out on and how to resolve conflict in a, not necessarily personal way, but in a, in a professional way. Um, Negotiation is something that they all talk about. Public speaking, um, managing their personal brand, uh, especially online now. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, how do, how that's sure. a big part of it, right. That's a very big part of it. Yeah, and um, uh, then they are, Kind of the kind of skill sets that people think they need for leading in the workplace I think that I agree about. Young women um, want to know how to manage meetings, um, how to put together a budget for an organization, how to read a 990, which is a reporting form for a nonprofit or a balance sheet for a company, um, so that they can to, and, uh, to be prepared to lead in a very specific ways. And those kind of skills, I think, are things that we would love to be able to teach to young men and women. In some cases, they ha it happens already in schools and they're in the career services offices, but in others, there's very discreet information that could be delivered through this program. That's right, and one of the things that we know um, for young women in particular is there's not as many role models out there in the real world. There certainly aren't as many in politics. There's not as many right. in business. We don't see... Uh, we don't see women in those visible positions uh, that you would naturally gravitate to. We, there's a few exceptions. We have uh, Mary Barra now as the top of head of uh, GM, which was, uh, you know, that's a that's a different position for a woman. And we're beginning to see some women move into those leadership positions, but they certainly are not everywhere, and there are not enough of them to be put out in front of all young women. Um, tell us a little bit about who has uh, agreed to come in and be speakers for the event on November 15th. Um, we are relying on local talent, which is which, great. Of which there is plenty, which there actually. Is plenty, there is which plenty, is, there's right. plenty. Um, I first want to um, say that Betty Connolly, who is the president yes. of the AAUW chapter, is going is to lead us through the day, and she's quite wonderful. Betty is fabulous, yes, uh, she is. And... Um, we are having um, Dale Smith, who is the dean here at the Clarkson uh, Business School, here, um, and she has actually done um, a lot of work on leadership and women in leadership, and written a book called Women in Work, and uh, written books on communication style. So she will be quite fantastic. Um, and um, Kristen Esterberg, the new president at SUNY Potsdam, is going to join us, and she has a wonderful background uh, as a leader, of course, having been... Um, and college administration and now president, but also a background in women and gender studies and has done uh, a lot of interesting research. And I would, will point out that uh, both of our keynote speakers um, have daughters of about college age. That's correct. In so, fact, uh, I, Dr. Esterberg was my guest last week on North Country Matters, and, and she told me that she has a uh, a daughter in high school and one who is, I believe, a sophomore at, at St. Saint Saint Lawrence. Lawrence. Yes. So very yes. much, very interested in, yes. and very much living through this process with her own, uh, with her own family as well. Um, 
So, well, that's really uh, going to be, as you say, there's a lot of, lot of really fabulous uh, local talent, and it's wonderful that we get to showcase them to exactly. all of these young women. So, exactly. Um, and what role, you have mentors who will be there as well as the women who will be keynoting. So tell us what role you envision for the mentors. Well, I like to, to have uh, good ideas about how things might develop if, if it all works towards good. And we are very hopeful that the women that um, at participate in the conference decide that this is kind of a great thing to spend their time on and might continue in some role. Um, as a mentor to a young woman who is interested in their chosen field, their chosen profession, um, perhaps as um, a mentor to a student group on one of the campuses mm -hmm. that has a, a, a community interest or need that they'd like to pursue, um, perhaps as a regular attendee at our programs. Um, I can even imagine, frankly, because it ha has happened a little bit already in our discussions on the campuses, I can imagine um, the uh, women who attend uh, deciding that, well, it would be nice to have some programs for our, ourselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some exchange of information. You know, it's, uh, there are a lot of things that, that could grow from, um, from this. But the mentors obviously will have whatever role they want to play, but we're hoping that they'll develop into sort of uh, a more supportive organization or, or individuals for our for our, the college students. And one thing that we know is that often <laughs> it is simply a matter of uh, giving them that opportunity to, to meet with Absolutely. these young women and from there the relationship grows organically and you know they, they find these common points of interest and once you know you begin to know yes. someone a little bit you exactly. want to spend more time with them. And you so. know this community is as you know because you're part you've done it yourself for so long it's, it's so supportive of Absolutely. these institutions and of the students. I. I um, There's this wonderful two-way street that, absolutely. that uh, you know, once you're once you get in, involved with that, it is uh, it, it's it's it's, so it's good for it's good on both sides, both for the institution and the people who belong to it, and for the community. Yeah. We have a lot so, of seniors who uh, tell us, "Oh, we're really sad to leave St. Lawrence," and gosh, we're really sad to leave Canton. Yeah, just for that reason. You know, I, I was just talking with a friend of mine uh, yesterday who um, used to live in Potsdam, and she's lived all over the country. Her <laughs> husband. Uh, was uh, involved in teaching at a number of colleges and somebody said to her you've lived all over the country what's your what's your favorite place and and she said without a, missing a beat Potsdam New York because it's a place where um, the college and the community are totally integrated and you never feel that sense of separation yeah that's a good so, that's a good point and I'm hoping this is just another mm -hmm. um, way that we can work together this that's right. project that's and right. I want to give a little a big tip of the hat to um, a group that I've been working with. I, I've been the coordinator, uh, maybe by default or maybe because I was so interested in it, but we have a planning group with representatives from um, each of the four colleges and they have been fantastic. Um, I want to say uh, that right now, Potsdam, uh, SUNY Potsdam is the only place that has a program that's directed towards women's leadership. Um, and Ruth Palacel, who runs that program, has been part of our committee and really helpful. And we have um, people from Student Life at SUNY Canton. We have um, a, kind of a big group from St. Lawrence mm -hmm. because recruited on the, from Career Services, Student Life, from the faculty. Uh, Kathleen Stein, who was right. a active on your board yes, at AEW, right. has yes. been yep. heavily She's our involved. public policy chair. Yep. Right. Uh, Jen Ball here from Clarkson, Clarkson right. is also an AEW active member. Yep. She's been really uh, great. Um, Brenda Papineau, who serves at St. Lawrence, running a program, uh, community-based learning program. She's been a great help. Um, I'm not mentioning everybody's name, but they've just been all It's a fantastic. very dynamic group And the group, group of is women. growing. Yes. We keep inviting uh, folks to join us and would love more help. Yeah, it's, it's a very dynamic group, and um, people who are not only leading on their own campus, but finding ways to make those cross-campus connections, right. which is something that we need to do more of, and, you know, this is, this is a great uh, opportunity to, to practice that right. and to find new ways to create those pathways. You know, and to circle back to the beginning of the project, um, I actually, um, the first, one of the first people I turned to when I was interested in this was uh, Karen Collins, who yes. is my co-spouse or serves, a, you know, she's married to Tony Collins but, and works at SUNY Potsdam. And she was really helpful in uh, promoting the idea and bringing forward resources and um, she's just been great. So lots of help from the, all of her. Yes, it's been, a, uh, it's been a very collaborative process and that of course is going to be 
uh, one of the keys to keeping this thing going is to continue to build those relationships right. and utilize those community resources. One of the, the nice things about this particular project is it actually mirrors some projects that AUW is doing at the national level. And um, so I, I wanted to mention a couple I'm of so those. Glad you, right. One of those is called Elector Campus Women Win, and that's a uh, project that's co-sponsored by AUW and Running Start. And it's the only program in the country that encourages and trains college-age women to run for elected office on the college with an idea that that will give them the experience and the training to start thinking about running for political office. There, right. um, there are going to be uh, 50 campus projects in this next wow. year. So it's, that That's project's great. grown a lot in the last that few years. Great. And, and a Running Start's a great organization. Yes, it is. Women. And um, a number of New York State campuses have held the program. This spring it was done at St. Lawrence University, or excuse me, uh, Syracuse University and at Ithaca College. And this, in the next spring, it's going to be done at SUNY Albany and SUNY Buffalo. So uh, really nice to see this program grow and, and have a couple of strong right. programs here in New York State. And we know that the more leadership experience that a student has, the more likely she is to aspire to leadership. So it's, it's about training and it's about right. opportunity. Um, we can't uh, overlook the fact that um, it also takes some role models and it's really difficult to create a pipeline for young women when they don't see many women ahead of them as a place to aspire to. Uh, and there's a, there's a big political leadership gap in this country. There is a recent right. survey that was done of 42,000 elected officials. 71% of all the elected officials in this survey were men, 90% were white, and 65% were white men. 65 were white men. But white men, as a group, only make up 31% of the U.S. Not population. Exactly so you've got a, a really out of uh, proportion balance there. Uh, for example, white men are eight times more likely to have political power than a woman of color. So that just shows how uh, how few role models there are for some of us. Right. In Congress, women are make up 18 and a half percent of uh, Congress. 24 states, half of the states in this country have never elected a woman governor, including New York. 22 states have never elected a woman to the U.S. Senate. And four states have never elected a woman to either chamber. So there's work to be done by, by, uh, uh, by any measure. It's really interesting. Locally, the picture is very mixed. Um, we're going to be electing uh, seven state representatives on November 4th here in St. Lawrence County. Three women and four men currently serve us. And this county actually has a very long tradition of electing women uh, in... The first women in the New York Senate. And that's the right. was a, a Ro woman Rota, from, Rota yes. Fox Graves, yes. She was actually, she, worked, she started out, she was elected to the assembly from St. Lawrence County in 1924, and she served for about 10 years. And then in 1934, she went to the New York State Senate, again, as the you say, first the first woman. woman. Um, that's... Um, kind of a nice little cachet for us it to is. say at the very it least. Is. Another national program is the um, National Conference for College Women Student Leaders and that is uh, nicknamed Nick Whistle. Uh, national because Conference the National for College Conference Women Student for Leaders. It is, spells Nick Whistle. It is a that. long <laughs> uh, mouthful to say. And what's really interesting about Nick Whistle is that it was held this past uh, June on uh, in Maryland, and there were a thousand young women there, and they were from wow. all over the country, and there were even some from um, other countries who came, and they learn about leadership concepts, and they, again, very much, very similar to what we're doing. They have keynote speakers, they have great role right. models we and mentors. We actually looked at their uh, program, models. and it's yeah. fantastic. And one of the yeah. real keys to that program is the networking. These young women come together, they have a very active social media uh, presence on the thing and they stay connected throughout their time right. as they go back to their college campuses so it's it's really um, an interesting program we hope that um, well we know that after the uh, we finish this pilot conference we're going to create a website if and if it does no more than advertise programs that might be of interest specifically to women we will have done 
enough. Right. But we want to go further, and one of the things that we are um, hoping to do is to post information about um, training conferences and leadership opportunities, particularly for young women. And Nick Whistle will be at the very top yeah. of the list because right. uh, AAUW does a fantastic job. And um, actually, one of the things that we can think about doing, too, is uh, making sure that we find young women on all four of the campuses who might be interested in going to Nick Whistle. There are some scholarships available, right. and there are... Uh, there is help to send uh, people to that, and that is, uh, I met some young women this summer who came and presented at the uh, summer leadership conference that AAUW does, and uh, there were two young ladies from uh, Jefferson oh, hey, Community College. Oh, I know, College. yeah, I've read about fabulous, them. They were really fabulous uh, things that they had to say about it and what they learned, and it was really an exciting opportunity for them. So, Lynn, this um, Young Women's Leadership Institute, is this new? for our colleges, or has something like this been tried before? Well, I am not, um, I don't have a long enough history, but I know there have been leadership training initiatives at, at our colleges. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, SUNY Potsdam right. has had uh, something in um, effect. Uh, not in recent memory, but I will say that it's, it's a relatively new development in the world outside of certain places like Rutgers. Um, that we have, that leadership training or leadership development has become um, ancillary to for college um, college programming because traditionally it was in the business schools. Right. Um, and then I think actually the women's organizations took a great interest and, and these political organizations particularly have, you can train people to do a lot of things, mm -hmm. run for office, mm -hmm. um, uh, become uh, astute leaders and strategy planners, you know, it does take practice and training. But so I think um, in that sense, it's sort of new or at least a new version of what might have been done before. You know, what's interesting about that is that the um, uh, people who have studied how women get into, for example, political leadership, um, they have to either self-identify or they have to be identified by somebody else. But often it takes multiple asks before they'll actually do it. And for a lot of women, they wait to get into politics about the time that they're finishing up their family responsibilities right. in their career. So they might be in their 50s and 60s by the time they decide to run for political office, which is great because they're bringing a lifetime of experience to the process, but it doesn't give them enough time to work themselves up through to the point where they might want to run got a lot of experience, for big right. regional or, or a national right. office. You can't, start, right. you can't start out as a... Uh, you know, a, as a local official at 60 and make it to the White House. You just exactly. don't have time. So, so. That's, a, that's probably true of a lot mm -hmm. of um, le leadership challenges for women. In fact, we notice in the colleges that um, for volunteers or board of trustees or high-level volunteers, you pretty much have to ask two or three women for every man, man mm -hmm. because women will say, oh, I've got my family, I've got my job, I can't take on more, how do I mm -hmm. do it? I don't think we're going to necessarily change that with these kind of programs, but certainly another thing that our focus groups uh, told us, that these young women are really interested in hearing from the generation ahead, half a step and a full step about how do you manage your work life balance and life, your work family balance, life yes. so that you can actually have another life. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> so you can give back you to your can, community right. in a meaningful way. Right. So, Lynn, if somebody's interested in getting involved in this project or maybe even helping to develop it at a, high, a local high school level, what advice would you give them? Well, I think um, at this point, um, it's a little early to, um, for us to promise anything other than a contact, and I would love for people to contact us. I think probably the two best ways, um, if people don't remember names and phone numbers, look in the AAUW website, St. Lawrence County Branch AAUW, and there are names on that website, and any of you all, any, yes. anybody on that list, um, or an email to AAUW will direct uh, we'll, we'll make sure the uh, question is directed to the right place. I am very happy to have phone calls or emails. Um, I'm lfox at stlawu.edu. Pretty easy to find that way. Mm -hmm. My home phone number is 315-229-7400. Love to get phone calls. Um, or uh, just, um, I think you can also probably reach um, through the career services on any of our right. campuses. Um, we'll know what's going on with right, this project. Because they've all been involved in the planning of it, so that's great. Yeah. Well, um, our time is up. We have come to the end of a fascinating conversation. Um, the, conf the, the pilot conference is going to be on uh, Saturday, November the 15th, and it's going to be on your campus right. in 
Eben Holden. Eben Holden, and Eben exactly. Holden, right? So, and it's mm -hmm. uh, um, the invitations have gone out, and I'm assuming they're starting to come back yes, in. Yes, so we you are going to have a good have idea a nice, of uh, who's right? going to be coming. We, we've gotten a great response from the mentors, and I will say that the invitation process was w random. We we had a certain amount of space and a certain number of things we wanted to accomplish, but um, and we hope that people will be receptive, and they have been. Right. And so we're really looking forward to that day. And soon after, we'll launch a website and maybe do a press release and maybe get a few of us to come back and sure. talk some more. And, uh, and uh, hopefully there'll be a 2.0 in 2015. That's exactly right. <laughs> so thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Don. These <coughs> conversations are a production of North Country Matters, which is produced here in the, the studios at Clarkson University. This show is a civic collaboration between the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters, and the Communication and Media Department here at Clarkson University. Until next time, remember, our North Country Matters.